Truth in History with Pastor Charles Jennings. Greetings. My name is Charles Jennings and welcome to Truth in History. Today I would like to talk about a subject that we hear a whole lot about in churches and have heard prominent educated men make this statement that Jesus was a Jew. I was listening to a man on YouTube the other day, and he seemed to be a credible uh, preacher and intelligent and well-meaning and sincere. And he was telling about his dreams that God had given him. And they sounded credible. And he seemed to be a very sincere individual. And then all of a sudden he said, you know, Jesus was a Jew. Now, where did he learn that? That's a popular phrase that is repeated over and over so many times that people actually believe it. But who has ever researched that to find out whether that is true? Was Jesus a Jew like we know Jews today? Go to Miami Beach. You've been there. Go to New York. Go to L.A. Go to places where you see a lot of Jewish people. Did Jesus look like them? Did Jesus act like them? Did Jesus believe like them? Did Jesus worship like them? It's a legend, a religious legend that cannot be proven that our Lord was a Jew. Look at some of the people that we see on TV. George Burns. Was Jesus like George Burns? Was Jesus like Adam Schiff, the congressman, or Jerry Adler? Did Jesus act like them? Did he have the mentality? Did he have the personality? Did he have the characteristics of the modern Jew? And I want to address that subject today. I know that whenever you approach a subject like this, by some people I'm automatically labeled. Because there's so much religious hype that Jesus was a Jew, it's gone so far that if you deny that idea, you're automatically called anti-Semitic. And that doesn't make any sense either. Because when you talk about someone that's anti-Semitic, you're talking about a whole lot of people. You're not only talking about the, uh, the family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, but you're talking about Hagar and her descendants. You're talking about Ishmael. You're talking about Abraham's brother's children. So really, there's a lot of non-thinking going on in church today. Now, those of you who have listened to me before know that I am really disappointed in the church world. I really am. In the institutionalized church. I love the body of Christ, though the body of Christ seems to be somewhat far less than what we should be, we're called to be. But religion in America has become institutionalized. And by that, I mean government is institutionalized. You can't drive on the road 
without having a permit, a license. You can't live in your house that you built and paid for without giving a token to the county. You can't go to the doctor these days without having some kind of approval, insurance. And that insurance company has to be licensed by the government. We've got government welfare. We have government loans. We have government uh, nurseries for our children. We have government owned and operated public school system. We have government regulations on business and to regulate the price of everything from cars to cabbage. Everything is institutionalized. Religion has become the same way. In other words, what church do you belong to? Are you, do you believe this or believe that? Where do you pay your tithes? It's institutionalized. And they've institutionalized this phrase. Jesus was a Jew. Was he really? Now, Jesus was the perfect man and the perfect God. He was 100% human, but yet 100% divine deity, because Jesus was God. So how do we describe this? In the days of the Lord Jesus, when he was teaching, when he was teaching his disciples and teaching the multitudes, he never said that he was a Jew. He never said that he was Jewish. Now, the modern concept of most preachers today, and I hope some preachers are listening, though my name doesn't carry much clout, so they're probably not tuning me in. But most preachers today believe that the Jewish people have an unbroken ancestral line all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believe that their family tree is just as direct and clean and pure all the way back to Abraham. So therefore, they take the liberty to name their ancestors. J Jacob was a Jew. Isaac was a Jew. Abraham was a Jew. Eber was a Jew, and therefore Shem was a Jew. That's the concept. And if you trace it on, the, on back, Adam was a Jew. But yet they say that all men came from Adam, which is another fallacious idea. So that makes everybody on the planet a Jew. Have these preachers ever got their two brain cells to connect with one another and think this thing, think it through? Jesus was not a Jew because he clashed with those people and he disowned them. The Bible tells us that Israel was the sheep of the Lord. Now, there's a lot of scriptures that 
we can go in. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. And in the book of Isaiah, it says the sheep of the Lord. And the Lord came to seek out the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So our Lord came to seek his sheep. And his sheep consisted of 12 tribes. Not just one. They say, well, all of Judah were Jews. But what about the other 11 tribes? They weren't Jews. Never once was northern, the northern house of Israel called Jewish. Israel was the sheep of the Lord. Now, I want to read you a verse of Scripture. When Jesus was contending with the Jews in John chapter 10, this is what he said. I told you, and ye believed not. Ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, ye are not my sheep. Now, in John chapter 10, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And he turns to the Jews and said, Ye are not my sheep. That's why they don't hear his voice. The reason why the Jews do not believe, it's not because their unbelief causes them not to be a sheep. But them not being a sheep is the premise, is the foundation. The reason why they can't hear is because they are not the Lord's sheep to start with. They're not his sheep. Now, you say, now Jesus was a Jew. Well, okay, his, his earthly mother was of the tribe of Judah. Luke chapter 3, Matthew chapter 1. His earthly mother was of the tribe of Judah. But she was of the house of David. You might say, well, what difference does that make? It makes all the difference in the world. Because if you'll recall during the Babylonian captivity, many of the Jews who returned back to Jerusalem had married foreign wives. Ezra chapter 10 Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 13. It's very plain to see. So there's one mixture. Now, in the book of Esther, during the time of the Medo-Persian Empire, recall the story of Haman, and Queen Esther, and how that plot was foiled. And then it says, many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. That's Esther 8, 17. Now, the Medo-Persian Empire had 127 different provinces. And it extended from Greece to over to India, from Turkey to the Persian Gulf and the Indian Ocean. That's a lot of different people. And they all called themselves Jews because many of the people became Jews, not all of them. 
So therefore, what uh, type of mixture would that be in their descendants and the second generation and the third generation? These were mixed multitudes of different nationalities, possibly different races. And therefore, it automatically vitiates or nullifies the idea that the Jews have a pure, perfect ancestry directly back to Abraham. It's the mixture. Now, when we come down to Jesus Christ, would you say that he had hymetic blood? Would you say, would you say that Jesus Christ had the, the blood of Ham or the blood of Canaanites? Would you say he had Babylonian blood? That's what you're saying when you say Jesus was a Jew. Tracing history all the way down to 120 B.C. with John Hyrcanus, with John Hyrcanus, that Jewish zealot, that general, that went over and conquered Edom and forced the people to become Jews and circumcised the men. They were Jewish by religion, Edomite by blood. I'm not asking you to take my word for it. Go to the Jewish Encyclopedia and read all about John Hyrcanus. 120 B.C. So that's 120 years approximately before Jesus came. So would you believe that Jesus had Canaanite, Edomite blood? That's what you're saying when you say Jesus was a Jew. But it was of the house of David he was born. Jesus was born of the house of David. Now, in the beginning, going all the way back, when in the Old Testament, when Israel came out of Egypt, they had basically one big family, but they soon divided after Solomon's death. The northern house called Israel or Ephraim or Joseph and the southern house called Judah because Judah was the chief tribe. But within the house of Judah, there was another house called the house of David. And this is what the Lord said to David. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever of the house of David. That was a particular lineage within the house or the tribe of Judah. It was the royal family or the royal house or the lineage of David without mixture. Isaiah chapter 11 says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Isaiah 11, 1. The indication is that when it says a rod out of the stem of Jesse, that little shoot, that little branch growing out of the main trunk of that Davidic tree going back to Jesse, his father. 
and it mentioned shall grow out of his roots. It's not going to have mixture coming in through it in the people of the land during Esther's day, that is, during the Medo-Persian Empire, injecting their blood into the line of David, or the Babylonian blood during the time of the return of the exiles of Ezra and Nehemiah's day. It's not going to have that. He's going to have a mother that is of a pure Davidic line. Matthew says this, the book of the generation or the lineage of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, stressing the fact that Jesus would be born of that direct, pure, clean lineage of David. The Angel Gabriel's message to Mary was, And the Lord God shall give unto him, that is Jesus, the throne of his father David. Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. He wasn't born of the tribe of Gad. He wasn't born of the tribe of Ephraim or Levi or any other tribe. The promise is, that he would be born of this lineage directly from David, and Matthew and Luke gives us that account. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 3 said, Concerning his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, we're talking about Jesus' mother's side of the family. Now, when Jesus was teaching and preaching throughout Galilee, Samaria, and Judea, Jesus was not practicing Judaism. There's a ministry on TV and and it's quite prominent, and I guess well-financed, where this rabbi said that Jesus was born Jewish, he lived Jewish, he worshipped Jewish, he died as a Jew, he rose again as a Jew, he ascended to heaven as a Jew, and he's now at the throne of God wearing Jewish clothes. What was that man smoking? That is one of the most asinine statements that I have ever heard. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Because Jesus wearing Jewish clothes he never dressed as a Levitical priest. I seriously doubt if he wore the yarmulke on his head. I seriously doubt if he ever wore that prayer shawl that some of these ministers are selling today to ignorant lackeys in the, in the pew. I seriously doubt it. Jesus stood apart from those people. He did not practice Judaism. He confronted Judaism. He confronted Judaism. 
because Judaism of Jesus' day and of our day is not, was not, true Old Testament Hebrewism or Hebraism. It was not. It was Talmudism. It was Kabbalah. It was the mystery of the rabbis. Jesus confronted those people. He looked at them and said, Ye are not my sheep. You don't believe? You can't believe because you are not my sheep. That's pretty strong language. Automatically, he let them know that there was a disconnect. This is what the Jewish world of March 1923 said. They said, fundamentally, Judaism is anti-Christian. That came from the Jewish World publication, March 1923. Now, from Judaism and the Christian predicament by Ben Zion Boxer said this, I quote, this is not an uncommon impression, and one finds it sometimes among Jews as well as Christians, that Judaism is the religion of the Hebrew Bible. It is, of course, a fallacious impression. Judaism is not the religion of the Bible." Unquote. Straight from the horse's mouth. Now we hear this term, Judeo-Christian. I would like for someone, someone, whoever it is out there, to send me some proof, documented proof, that Christianity is Judeo. I didn't say that Christianity is Hebrew or Old Testament or Pentateuch or Law of Moses, but I'd like to see proof that Christianity is based upon Judaism. This is what Alfred Lilienthal said in his book, The Zionist Connection. Now, he was a Jewish writer. This is what Mr. Lilienthal said. Judaism was never heard of by the Hebrews or Israelites. It appears only with Christianity. Flavius Josephus was one of the first to use the name in his recital of the war with the Romans to connote a totality of beliefs, moral commandments, religious practices, and ceremonial institutions. When the word Judaism was born, there was no longer a Hebrew-Israelite state. The people who embraced the creed of Judaism were already a mixture of many nations, races, and strains, and this diversification was rapidly growing." Unquote. Now, we believe as Christians that Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God, not half man and half God. But when you look at the concept that Jesus was a Jew, that means that he would have had 
not only the flesh of a Jew, but the blood of a Jew. Jewish blood. But yet these Christians turn right around and say they believe that he was God in the flesh. So what you have is a half man, half God, demonic, really a pagan monstrosity. What about the divine side of Jesus? When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said this, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Who was the father of Jesus? Was it a Jew? Couldn't have been. The father of Jesus was not a Jew. He was not a Chinaman. He was not a German. He was not an Eskimo. He wasn't an Englishman. The father of Jesus Christ was God himself. And the Lord Jesus said, God is spirit. We believe, and the Bible teaches, that Jesus was fathered by the Holy Ghost, which, who is God himself, because he couldn't have two fathers. So the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, thou hast prepared a body for me. Thou hast prepared a body for me. The Bible also tells us that the life of the body is in the blood. The life of Jesus Christ the human body of Jesus Christ had blood. That blood was his life. But where did that blood come from? Your blood comes from the Father. Mary had a womb. And Jesus had no human sperm. Mary had no human sperm to enter her body to form Jesus Christ. It was the seed of God. And it says he was born of incorruptible seed. If Jesus would have been a Jew of anybody, any man, from Mary's time all the way back to Adam, if she would have had a man to know her and to implant his sperm into her. Then Jesus would have been imperfect. He would not have been God. He would have been imperfect man just like the rest of us. 
his blood would have been tainted. He would have had the sinful nature. But Jesus was not born with a sinful nature. Mary's body that womb within her was the place, the location, the condition for God to prepare a body. But the book of Hebrews tells us that He was made like unto His brethren. His mother was of the lineage of David. So on his mother's side, Jesus was of the lineage of David. But on his father's side, he was supernatural. He was divine. He was God in flesh. Perfect man and perfect God. Perfect man being that he had no earthly father to taint his blood. His blood was not tainted, neither was his nature, his human nature. He had perfect human nature. He was not born with a sin nature to make him sin. So this concept that Jesus was a Jew, if Jesus was a Jew, like we know Jews today, first of all, He would have been of mixed blood, Canaanite, definitely Edomite from John Hyrcanus' work in Edom, 120 B.C., Babylonian blood, the foreign blood of the people of Esther's day during the Medo-Persian Empire, and the mixture of people in the intertestamental period of 400 years. If you read the history of the intertestamental period between Malachi and Matthew, there was a lot of intermixture of people including the Jewish people. So Jesus, if He was a Jew, He would have had all that mixed blood in Him. But He didn't get His blood from them. It's nothing but propaganda. And really, I am shocked at the stupidity of preachers. And some of them have the alphabet behind their name. making a six-figure salary. The chosen people concept. Kinsmen of the Lord. We hear those phrases. Jesus wasn't kin to those people that He was preaching to when He said, in John 10, you're not my sheep. Christ never, never called the Jews my kinsmen according to the flesh. Preachers are just parroting what they have heard all their lives, or in Bible college, or from other preachers. Jesus did not have Jewish appearance. I've heard it said, and you have heard it said, Jesus looked like the modern Arab. I mean, what are these people smoking? The modern Arab? 
but some of these people hate the Arabs. They said he was tawny. His complexion was brown. Because there's looking at the people over there in the modern Middle East thinking the people of Jesus' day looked the same way. No, it's been 1,900 years plus. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of migrations, a lot of wars. This concept of Jesus was a Jew. Number one, it's popular. You want a, a preacher that gets up and says that he will not be contested because really the cabbage heads sitting in the congregation. They're just wanting to get out of church anyway to go to KFC and beat the Methodist. So they're not going to contest him. Number two, it's for political purposes. They're trying to buy their safety. These preachers are trying to buy their safety. In other words, don't attack me because I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm, I'm one of the good guys. You know, I, I believe Jesus was a Jew. I worship a Jew, they say. Someday I'm going to fall down at the feet of a Jew. How sickening. How repulsive. And number three, it's for the idea of Jewish superiority. If Jesus was a Jew and the Holy Ghost being his father, then God's a Jew. God is a Jew. He would have to be if you follow that erroneous train of thought. Jesus got his blood from his father, incorruptible blood. His father is the, Jesus said, a spirit, the God of the universe, omniscient, omnipresent. All knowing all present, all powerful. So the God in heaven is a Jew. Are these preachers, do they ever stop to think who they claim to worship? We're not worshiping a Jew. We're not worshiping a German. We're not worshiping an Englishman. We're not worshiping any human nationality. We're worshiping the Word made flesh. We're worshiping the ineffable one, the incarnate one. God himself in flesh in this prepared body. Because, you see, Joseph was not the father of Jesus, neither was any other human man. Hebrews 10.5 A body hast thou prepared me. This body of Jesus was a supernatural creation. It had to be. 
I mean, it's a, we refer to a natural baby with a natural mother, natural father as a miracle. As a miracle. But that child is born with that sinful nature inherited from Adam and his natural father and mother. But when Jesus was conceived, Jesus' body was a supernatural creation, a new thing in the earth, one and only. So therefore, he had a perfect human nature. It says, and the word was made flesh. His mother's line was pure as he identified of the line of David because Hebrew says he identified with his brethren. He took on the seed of Abraham and therefore being made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. If Jesus was a Jew, his blood was tainted, his blood cannot save, his blood cannot heal, his blood cannot forgive, we have no salvation. But we are saved by his perfect blood, the blood of God. The blood of God, perfect blood, incorruptible seed, not a corruptible seed. So when we come to these things, when we come to these profound truths, we can see where Jeremiah in chapter 31 of his book said, The Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. But that body that body's life source was not human. It was divine, born of the Holy Ghost, conceived or carried by the Virgin Mary, and born perfect man, perfect God. Well, I know someone will ask, well, what about John chapter 4? The woman at the well said, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, because the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? Jesus was not speaking here. An ignorant woman was speaking. What she was saying, you are from Judea. Because the word Jew is a mistranslation, but it gives the impression to a non-thinking person, that Jesus was a Jew like I'd been describing, modern Jews today. She was making the distinction between someone of Samaria herself and someone from Judea. But Jesus did not call himself a Jew. 
she called himself a Judean or a Judahite, which would have been proper. But Jesus did not refer to himself as that. It was someone else. I pray that someday that the Israelite people, the true Israel of God, would recognize their heritage and recognize their calling and their destiny. And my heart's cry is, Lord, open thou the eyes of your Israel people towards their own identity and get their eyes off of the imposters called the Ashkenazi, Talmudic, Khazarian Jewish people of the earth. Whether they be in North America, Europe, or Palestine, we have a wonderful heritage. And one of the heritages, the greatest, is found within the pages of this Bible. But yet we have thrown our heritage away and given it to a strange people. If you've never received one of our magazines, we'll be glad to send you one. All you have to do is contact us. Uh, Truth and History magazine is completely free. And we pray that you have been blessed by today's lesson. God bless you very much. We'll see you the next time.